Well, I'm sure you'll recognize our next guest from her Lemonade Car Show or one of her many columns. She's writing currently for the National Post, the Drive column. Lorraine Sommerfeld, hello. It's nice to be here, Val. Oh, it's so great to talk to you because I've been fascinated by your career. I mean, I'm sure you get this question a lot, and I apologize for asking it, but we're all interested. As a woman in the car business, in the car industry, how did they decide to turn to you as an expert? I think it was more a demographics thing. I was writing a um, column called Motherload for the Hamilton Spectator, started about 15 years ago, and they wanted to bring my readers over to the car section, so they said, will you write a column in the car section? And I said, no. <laughs> they said, well. You they must have known you knew something about cars. I didn't really. Um, I had had a background in some, mostly being a mother, but br again, bringing uh, that perspective to it. I said, I don't want to go to car shows and I don't want to do car reviews. I said, let me do whatever I want. And they said, okay, and if you tell a woman she can do whatever she wants, <laughs> and then pay and her. here we are. <laughs> and you really resonate with people. They appreciate, uh, men and women appreciate your, your honest take on, uh, I mean, we're all driving cars, well, so we want to be able to trust the person who's telling us about them, right? I think that's the thing. And I cover everything in the industry that's not just the hardcore reviews, because there's people that do that really, really well in the places I write. So I do the other stuff. I do all the driving things that would pertain to most people that put the key in and turn it. So whether it's insurance, leasing, buying, car, teaching your kids how to drive, getting the keys off your parents when they're too old, all that kind of stuff, that's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've been writing now for uh, over 10 years, right? I was about to turn 40, so it's actually 14 years nearly. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it was time for a change, so I decided to become a writer. That's great. It's actually not that long. It's not, To be actually. so well established after only 14 years is well, actually really good. I gave myself a year to make it work. I had two little kids who were hungry, so I had to be um, a little bit efficient about it. So I worked really hard, and it worked. I love your blog. You, you talk a lot about your adventures. Uh, you've had a lot of fun car adventures. Do you have any favorites? It's a fabulous industry for women or for anybody, but um, we get to fly around the world and drive great cars is the short form. And... Yeah, I've driven down the Pacific Coast Highway in a Rolls Royce, and I've driven in Argentina at the highest passable point by car, and I've been on racetracks all over the place, and I've done off-roading in crazy places. I've been in the Yukon in the winter in a smart car, which <laughs> was not so smart. <laughs> um, a lot of snow driving, Arctic Circle three years in a row in January. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. My God, you had no idea where that initial, hey, can you write a column about cars, would take you. I didn't even know this existed. I didn't know this was a thing, because it's a niche industry in many ways. And I got there and went, oh, I can do something with this. And if I can't do something different, I don't want to do it. So I found different ways to write about it. Manual or standard? Oh, manual. <laughs> but I respect. Or, uh, but I just said the same Sorry. thing. Manual or automatic? automatic? Manual. Yeah, but I respect in urban centers, you got to go automatic, because your left leg will just get too pooched. So <laughs> I, I respect people having to buy you know, what works best for them. But you got, you love that stick. Yeah. <laughs> best and worst car experiences on the job? Worst was probably hypermiling across the country. Hypermiling? Hypermiling, it's the people who do extreme fuel economy. So it took almost two weeks to crawl across the, across the country, which I could probably do in three days. Because you could if never I had go over the uh, speed limit? Oh, you can't even get near the speed limit, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> we angered people in every province, it was just. <laughs> But we got from Halifax to Vancouver on four and a half tanks of fuel in a Passat, which if you think about it, it's pretty outrageous. So, but that was, um, a lot of patience was required to do that. And that was a little bit crazy. And the off-roading stuff like Colorado and Argentina with Land Rover and Moab in Utah with Jeep. That's, that's among the best? Yeah, I like going really slow, really fast or really slow. And there's the scenery. This country, parts of the U.S., spectacular country. Canada has, I've been all over it from RVs to Smarties. It's a beautiful country, wow. and I get to see it, and so it's nice. What is it like to, you launched your career just as the internet was taking off. So mm -hmm. you, you became a writer in the internet age. Do you think that makes you different than anybody else? I think it had to make me more agile and more adaptive quickly. A lot of people who came from a journalism background, which I don't, I have an English degree that's gathering dust somewhere, I don't know where it is, um, you had to adapt and understand that your work lived forever. And I started out writing about my children when they were young. You have to be really, really careful about what you're putting out there because now it lives. It's not under the bird the next day. And so I learned how to write so they were not embarrassed. They were never the punchline. I could be, but they couldn't be. 
And so I tried to fashion myself after someone like Irma Bombeck, who knew how to position herself. That's a, a name from another era. But you can write about your family, but you have to protect your family at the same time. And it was a really good training ground for realizing how much information you can release. And then the internet picks it up. And so it's a good way to train yourself because it will come back as everyone learns. The internet's forever and it will bite you. And you have to be very cautious at the same time you're being revealing and bringing readers in. So it's a, it's a line you're, you're riding. You have to be very careful. Your kids appreciate that now that they're older? I used to pay them when they were younger. If I used something that they said, they used to charge me five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> and now they're 22 and 25. It cost me a lot more than five bucks. <laughs> now, when you're talking about other people, uh, do you have the same issue? I know on your blog, you, you, uh, you often get advice questions from mm -hmm. readers. They want yeah. really personal advice. And yes. how honest are you able to be in those situations? I'm blunt. I figure I have this thing with my kids. If, if they have the courage to ask me something, I have to have the courage to answer them. And I tell parents this too, if your kids want to know about sex or drugs or what you did, it took a lot for them to ask you that. So you, the least you can do is be as brave as your kid is and answer them. And I do the same with readers. They bring me things because they trust me and I want to value that and validate it. And so I'll be honest with them. And if someone says, I'm thinking of doing this, I'll go, oh, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think in your car reviews, that honesty is appreciated as well. And so you, you do something a little different when you're testing cars. You don't just take it to a racetrack and drive it around. How do you do it? I, I, we have access to a lot of spectacular cars. We have access to all the regular cars, the same kind I buy. But if I've got, I had McLaren last year, the year before, I get, which is a spectacular supercar. I mean, it's just an F1 car. And I took it to Ronald McDonald House and took the kids for rides all day. I was in tears all day because I just, um, you know, I mess about that. And when I had a Lamborghini, went on Twitter, said, I'll be at these places all day. Whoever shows up, you can go for a ride. Come so on. It was a blast. It was a really long weekend. I was exhausted. But I've got what is essentially the Batmobile. So why can't people who wouldn't usually have access to these cars? I like to bring it to normal people, not just show everybody that I get to drive it, because who cares? What are you testing next? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a huge pickup truck out there right now. I'll drive it too. I, I have something different every week. So fun, so what a great fun. life. It's so it's varied and fun, and um, uh, you're carving your own path. It's unpredictable, which I like. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been a blast, thank Where you. Where should we check you out? What's the first place we should go to look for your stuff? Um, driving.ca is for the columns are up there. Hamilton Spectator, I'm still writing Motherlode, and LorraineOnline.ca is my own blog where everything is parked. All right, so. we'll see you around in a fancy car. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lorraine. <laughs>